Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I'm Aaron Lewis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Doing good. So today we are talking about the Dunhill Aged Maduro Short Robusto. Uh, cigar is 4-inch by 54 ring gauge. Uh, comes out of the General Cigar Dominicana factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, wrapper is Sun Grown Lajero Maduro. Uh, the binder is from Nicaragua, and the filter is from the Dominican Republic. Um, blender is undisclosed on this. Price point is $10.45, and the cigar was released in September of 2016. So, June, what was your pre-light experience with the cigar like? Uh, good pre-light experience. Um, in terms of the look of the cigar, um, it, it had this like jet black uh, Maduro, uh, almost like borderline a squirrel shade wrapper to it. Uh, good oil content on the wrapper. Um, the wrapper felt very thick and sturdy. Uh, things well pressed, seems tight. Uh, triple cap was really thick uh, on the cigar and uh, uh, well applied. In terms of the nosing experience, uh, off the wrapper I got some spicy cedar and hay. Um, smell of the foot, uh, white pepper, rich nuttiness, and an aged oak, and cold draw, uh, aged oak, and uh, cardboard. Yeah, the, like the wrapper was very deep, dark brown, almost black. Um, there were a couple of small veins that were visible, but I think it was just kind of how the, the wrapper looked like it was textured. You, you kind of see the veins that were um, popping out there. Um, the seams were pretty well invisible because of how uniform that dark brown color was. Um, and it was hard to tell, but it looked like it was two caps. But if you say three, then I'll take your word for oh. it. Um, but it was it was super. It's super dark. It's hard. It's hard to tell. Um, the band had a kind of a reddish copper background with some white borders and some gold and white lettering and artwork on it. Uh, aroma from the wrapper was like a mix of chocolate and barnyard, uh, and the foot gave like a, a faint sweet wood. Um, pre light draw kind of brought more of that sweet wood that I was getting from the foot aroma. So flavor wise, what was your experience first third to final third? Um, first third, uh, very dark earthy tones, um, notes of bitter and chalky earth, uh, dry nuts, dark cocoa, wooded bitterness, charred oak, uh, and a very like well-mannered understated sort of a black pepper. Uh, there's like the semi-sweet cream, uh, that you could kind of taste in the back layer. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, you know, the bitter and charred notes, um, uh, kind of overtakes that, uh, the retrohaling. Very strong black pepper and sharp oak uh, finish. Very long lasting with the overwhelming amount of wood bitterness and charred oak that absolutely engulfed the palate. Um, in terms of strength and uh, body <clears throat> within the whole cigar, um, I thought the strength was medium full uh, and body hit somewhere between medium and medium full. Uh, moving on to the second, third. The continuation of that same dark and earthy profile, um, mainly getting wood bitterness, charred oak, dark cocoa and a subtle black pepper. Uh, the retro hills, the, the fierceness and that strong uh, aspect of that pepper started dying down a little bit. Um, and it was more balanced out by the pepper, by the uh, by this cream note that I got uh, in addition to that sharp oak. Um, finish, still same thing, um, you know, full, you know, palate encasing uh, bitterness and charred oak. Um, and then moving on to the last third, um, the, the main thing about the last third is uh, it mimicked the first, thir uh, the uh, the second third um, in every single possible way in terms of, you know, like the mouth draws, the retro finish and all that. Um, but starting from like the second half of the last third uh, is where the profile really changed for me um, and uh, unfortunately changed for the worse. Um, I started getting just absolutely overwhelming amount of that charred oak and that wooded bitterness uh, and it was so strong that it dominated uh, all the other notes and it was really hard to taste the other notes in general. So, um, and I especially realized that on the finish where uh, the palate was super heavy with that char and bitterness. Yeah, initial draws for me brought a mix of chocolate, wood, and some baking spice. And then after a few draws, that chocolate kind of faded away and the baking spice uh, transformed into a dull, a kind of a dull black pepper um, with that wood remaining. Uh, the retro hail carried a mix of chocolate and wood. And then at a half inch in, that chocolate kind of came back to mix with the wood while the pepper was kind of you know, very faint and in the background. Um, at an inch in, that chocolate retreated and uh, the lead kind of left that woodiness, which was a, a little drying at that point. Uh, and the strength was just below medium for me in the first third. And then getting in the second third, um, profile, you know, is pretty much wood. Um, it's not as drying. Um, it has a little slight baking spice component to it in the background. 
And then at a quarter inch in, uh, I got a slight bit of cream that joined the woodiness. And the retro hill was like a slightly bitter wood note. And at a half inch in, uh, some pepper kind of peaked back in to mix with the slightly creamy wood. Uh, and the retro hill was uh, pretty much creamy wood um, and the bitterness had left. Um, as the third was coming to a close, the cream left and the, some bitterness joined in with the wood uh, and the strength bumped up to be just right at medium. And then getting to the final third, um, the bitter wood continued. Um, retro hill was slightly creamy and dirty oak. Uh, and then a half inch in, uh, the cigar heated up a bit and kind of, and interestingly, um, the bitterness actually de decreased when the cigar heated up. Um, but I got a little bit of mintiness that kind of joined in with the wood. Um, the retro hill was like a, a very creamy oak at that point. And as the cigar was wrapping up, um, the mintiness went away and the heat subsided and kind of just left, left a lone oak note to it. Um, and the strength had bumped up just a little bit more to be slightly above medium. So performance wise for burn and draw, what was your experience like? Um, perfect. Uh, in terms of both burn and draw, it was absolutely perfection. Uh, burn, nice, tight, white ashes, uh, no flowering at all. Uh, self tap ashes averaging inch and a half. Um, so really, like, I tapped this thing, like, twice, uh, yeah. given that it's only, like, what is it? Four, four inches. So, yeah. yeah. So um, burn line, super razor sharp. Um, never had to, you know, use my lighter. Uh, smoked this cigar in an uh, hour and 30 minutes, which is uh, really good for short Robusto. Uh, draw is perfect. You know, I, I cut the cap kind of within that last little strand of that um, cap, and uh, it yielded just absolutely the best draw you could possibly have. Yeah, I mimic what you're saying. It was construction was perfect. So Burns razor sharp the entire way. Um, for me, I didn't self-tap, so I let it go until it was ready to drop. So it went two and a half inches. And then it held on again until the scar was finished. So I just it fit, it fell once, and then that was it. Which I think I typically kind of expect that, like almost from like the Oliva nubs and things like that. Right. Typically, you're either going to get it's going to smoke the entire way, or you're going to you know you'll typically drop once, especially when you get into the large ring gauges. They'll just kind of hang on mm -hmm. for a while. Um, draw wise, that's what I prefer. So I can't say anything bad about the construction at all. So overall, what were your thoughts? Um, this was average smoking experience for me. Um, I thought that. The cigar had no doubt a lot of this that that same what I was talking about earlier uh, the dark and earthy tones, mm -hmm. um, and then you know that mixed with char and bitterness basically wraps up the flavor profile. Um, you know, it, I think about some of the ways that I would have really enjoyed the cigar more, uh, and I think if you would have added, if if a journal would have added um, sweetness uh, and more cream, uh, I think that would have helped balance out that darkness. Um, and that that super charred aspect and the, and the bitterness of it. Um, and also, uh, I think it would have aided in uh, that medium full strength as well. Uh, and just basically make it more of a balanced profile for me, even though it's a very like powerful delivery of a cigar. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I I think the best part of this cigar is probably the construction, um, right. how perfect it was. So uh, average overall for me. Yeah. Uh, for me, the first third had a nice flavor combination that included chocolate. Um, and it kind of settled down into a primarily woody profile the rest of the way. Um, strength was right around medium for me the entire way. So, I, you know, people that, you know, aren't, you know, big on strength, I don't think will be dominated by this one. Um, this is probably going to be one of the rare times where I'm going to say I want to try a cigar in a longer Vitola. Um, but I'd like to do that just to kind of see if the flavors have a little more time to build and transition. Uh, just on a four inch cigar with a, a large ring gauge, like 50, you know, anything 50 or above, it just kind of feels like it's too short. It, like, by the time you get started, it's wrapping up kind of thing. You don't really get the transitions for the through the thirds. Um, but unfortunately, you know, Dunhill seems to be getting out of the cigar game. So, um, yeah. you know, these cigars probably won't be much, around much longer. So, I'd say if you come across one, grab one, try it, see if you like it. If you like it, buy them up because they're probably going to be gone um, unless um, General kind of you know tries to take over the brand name. Um, but those are those are my thoughts. So getting into the scores, I gave it a 6.33. You gave it a 5.67. How do you think that matches up with your experience? Um, matches well. I mean, it's, it's in the you know mid-ish fives because uh, the construction helped it a lot. But I rated it overall in an average you know flavor profile for me. So... No, that's, that score's good. Yeah, my match is up well. I give it a good uh, in the flavor rating for the first third just because of the chocolate um, note was um, 
it was pretty enjoyable. So um, I enjoyed that. Um, but I, I was average the rest of the way as well. So I think that's kind of where we're at. And, you know, again, perfect construction really helps the cigar out. So, um, you know, I thought it was, you know, a slightly above average cigar um, in terms of, uh, you know, some good flavors in that first third. And uh, just you didn't have to think about the construction at all. So that was nice. Any other final thoughts from you? Um, no, I uh, I don't know whether to be sad or happy about the discontinuation of Dunhill. Right. Uh, maybe they'll focus more of their energy on the other brands that I typically like better, such as, you know, Taranio and CAO. So. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. If you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us, but also check out the full written review on the website, developingpalace.com. Follow us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google+, and you can also catch all our review recaps on podcasts. So uh, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one.